Okay, so here are some instructions for uh, February 20th. Um, you guys will be working on a lab regarding uniform circular motion. Um, I wanted to show you a couple things about the simulator that you're going to be using to gather data. Hopefully by the time you've listened to this, you've already read um, the uniform circular motion investigation uh, background information, and you've kind of thought about what circular motion means um, and the variables that are important. So it turns out, um, first of all, let me go ahead and bring up this simulator. So when you bring the link up, you may have to click run to get it to go. And what it's going to do is give us an object that's in uniform circular motion, steady speed motion in a circular path. You can kind of slide this to kind of look at it edge on. And it's giving you a bunch of vectors here that we don't really need. Um, we can remove those if we'd like just to imagine maybe a ball circulating on a string at a steady speed and um, hopefully what you've realized for, through the reading is that the force vector the net force on this object would have to be inward it's called a centripetal or center seeking force and that's really what our investigation focuses on um, what variables quantitatively um, change the amount of net centripetal force on an object that's moving like this. Um, so this simulator allows us to change two of the important variables, the velocity and the mass of the object. You can see that if I make this thing move faster, you can see visually that the force vector gets larger, um, and you can even see down here what that value would be. So this is kind of uh, where you're going to go for your information uh, for today's lab. This is giving you the force that would be required to keep this object moving in circular motion at this speed. And then the other thing we can play around with is mass. If I make the mass of the object bigger, notice too that that's making the force vector longer. It's making the number go higher. If I drag that down and make it a less massive object, now it's only a one kilogram object and we see that the force went down accordingly. Um, so that's basically what you want to do to get your data tables for this lab. Uh, leave mass at some steady value, and you should note that on your sheet, and pick five or six velocity values um, to get data pairs between the velocity that's changing and the force that's dependent on that velocity. So that's one experiment. Keep mass constant and change the velocity. And then you're going to want to set velocity constant at whatever value you choose and vary the mass. And again, get five or six data points between the independent variable mass, you're changing that, and the corresponding or dependent variable force um, that relates each time. If you look on your data sheet that you should get from the sub, I went ahead and already put in values for radius because one of the things you can't do in this particular investigation is change the radius of rotation. Um, you could do that. You could imagine maybe swinging a ball on a larger string and getting data. So what I've done is given you sample data that will work for your investigation, assuming that we had a third slider here that changed the radius of rotation. Um, so that's what you can use for that particular um, part of the investigation. So you're actually analyzing three relationships here. Um, the relationship between velocity and net force the relationship of mass and net force, and then the relationship of radius and net force. Um, so that's really what you're gathering. Again, you're looking right here to get your force values, and you're using these sliders to change your uh, independent variables. A couple other things to note. Let me just speed this up a bit. Just in general about circular motion. Notice if I do turn on the velocity vector, um, one of the things you can do here is pause it. And the dark blue vector represents the actual velocity vector. These lighter blue vectors would be the components. But one thing to notice as this goes around, the length of that velocity vector is constant, and it's always tangent to the circle. That's something we will assume to be true um, whenever we have uniform circular motion. Um, if we look at the force vector, always pointing inward, steady value, and likewise, one thing we'll want to look at eventually is the acceleration. It's also centripetal because the velocity vector isn't really changing its size. We don't have the object speeding up or slowing down. 
but the direction of that velocity vector keeps bending back towards the middle. Okay, and that's why we would say that we have a centripetal acceleration when this is the case. So good luck with the lab, and get as far as you can with it today, and we'll discuss results tomorrow.